Mark chapter 15, verse 15, the Bible says, And so Pilate, willing to content the people, released Barabbas unto them, and delivered Jesus when he had scourged him to be crucified. And the soldiers led him away into the hall called Praetorium, and they called together the whole band. And they clothed him with purple and plaited a crown of thorns and put it about his head and began to salute him, Hail, King of the Jews. And they smote him on the head with a reed and did spit upon him and bowing their knees worshipped him. And when they had mocked him, they took off the purple from him and put on his own clothes on him and led him out to crucify him. Now look down at verse number 24. The Bible says, And when they had crucified him, they parted his garments, casting lots upon them, what every man should take. And it was the third hour, and they crucified him, and the superscription of his accusation was written over the king of the Jews. And when they, uh, and with him they crucified two thieves, and the one on the right hand, the other on the left. And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith he was numbered with the transgressors. And they that passed by railed on him, wagging their heads and saying, All thou that destroyest the temple and buildeth it in three days, save thyself and come down from the cross. Likewise also the chief priests mocking said among themselves with the scribes, He saved others, himself he cannot save. Let Christ the King of Israel descend now from the cross that we may see and believe. You ought to underscore that. Seeing is not believing. So then faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Seeing is not believing. Miss Annette and I, we're just in a, a, a part of the country that showed the handiwork of God. People around it all the time. They see it, but they don't see him. Right. They don't believe on him. Uh, one tour guide told us the place where we were was 350 million years old. I wanted to say wrong. He did say one thing. He said it was formed because it came out of the ocean. Wrong. The ocean came to it. There was a great flood about 4,000 years ago that formed everything that we just were witnessing. But see, they see it, but they don't believe. We were in another part that had beautiful scenery uh, uh, places carved out by the hand of God uh, and there were more crystals and tarot card weeders and witches there than there was any evidence of, of the Lord. We searched and searched and searched and finally found one Baptist church and they didn't use the Bible. People lost. They see all the, the effects of God. Can I say this crowd had seen the miracles Jesus done? They'd heard the messages he preached. If he'd have came down from the cross, they wouldn't have believed and there'd been no hope for us. They went on to say, And they that were crucified with him reviled him. When the sixth hour was come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which is being interpreted, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And some of them that stood by when they heard it said, Behold, he calleth Elias, or Elijah. And one ran and filled a sponge full of vinegar and put it on a reed and gave him to drink, saying, Let alone, let us see whether Elias will come to take him down. And Jesus cried with a loud voice and gave up the ghost. And the veil of the temple was written twain from top, the top to the bottom. And when the centurion which stood over against him saw that he so cried out and gave up the ghost, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. Let's pray. Father, we sure do bless you. We thank you for Calvary. Lord, what you did on the cross is what it took to buy our sin debt, pay for us, redeem us. Lord, adopt us into the family of God. 
Lord, all those things we are unworthy of, but we are very grateful. Now, Lord, we thank you for these in attendance today. You alone know the need of every heart. Lord, some may need a fresh look at Calvary. Some may need a first look at Calvary. Lord, some, Lord, may have forgotten about Calvary. So, God, I pray you'd speak to hearts this morning. I pray you'd revive us. I pray that, Lord, we'd leave forth from this place renewed and excited about the goodness of God. Now, Father, I pray for that one that may be struggling, that one that may be hurting, that one that may be facing grave things. Lord, that one that has obstacles that, Lord, seem uh, impossible to overcome. God, I pray you'd speak to hearts this morning. And I pray that every need would be met through the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray especially for those that may be in our midst that are unsaved, lost without Christ. I pray today would be the day of their salvation. Father, I do pray for the sick. You touch them. I pray for Miss Billy. You'd help her. her. And I certainly do pray that, Lord, you'd be with those that are providentially hindered. Now use this unworthy vessel this morning, Lord. Help us, Lord, to convey what you've placed on our hearts. And Lord, I pray that folks uh, would receive it with gladness. Have your will and way. Bind the powers of hell. Put a hedge about us. We certainly plead the blood of the Lord Jesus over this place, asking for thy will to be done. For it's in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus we do pray. Amen. Amen. Let me show you a few things as a way of introduction. I want you to notice, first of all, they sentenced Jesus. We find in verse 15, and this is old Pilate willing to content the people. Release Barabbas unto them and deliver Jesus. Can I say they sentence him? Luke's account in Luke 23, 4, Pilate said, I find no fault in him. Can I say, examined him several times, sent him to Herod. They found no thing uh, worthy of crucifixion for the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, yet Pilate, being a, a politician, uh, was fearful of the people rather than doing what is right. Uh, and uh, Pilate uh, released unto them Barabbas, who was a, a rebel and a murderer, uh, an order for the Lord Jesus to be crucified. Uh, now as much as that uh, uh, makes me mad, as much as that incenses me, uh, 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 friends, you got to realize uh, Jesus was the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. Uh, had Jesus not went to Calvary, there'd been no hope of salvation or redemption for mankind. Uh, we see they sentenced Jesus. Notice they scourged Jesus. Again in verse 15, they delivered Jesus when he had scourged him to be crucified. That word scourged means that they beat him. They beat him with a cat of nine tails. They beat him with some 39 stripes if they beat him according to the Jews. Now the Romans were known to beat a man up to 100 stripes. All I know is the, uh, uh, it was prophesied in, in the book of uh, uh, Psalms, in Psalms 22, uh, he said, my bones stare at me. They beat him so much that his flesh had been ripped from his body, uh, that the muscles and the sinews and the tendons uh, had been ripped and torn. Uh, uh, my dear friends, Isaiah said uh, his visage was so marred that he didn't even look like a man anymore. Uh, they beat the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, they beat him uh, because with his stripes we are healed. Uh, Brother Brian, every sin that you would commit, every sin that I would commit, uh, Jesus had to die for our sins uh, and he was beaten for you uh, and he was beaten for me they sentenced him they scourged him uh, can I say they shamed uh, the Lord Jesus uh, look at verse 17 and they clothed him with purple uh, and planted a crown of thorns and put it about his head uh, they began to mock him uh, can I say that crown of thorns uh, uh, you, uh, listen little rose thorns will hurt uh, they'll prick uh, uh, but if you've ever seen the thorns of that land they look like spikes they're three and four inches long uh, and they'd plaited a crown and put those spikes in it uh, and when they pressed that upon his head uh, the very flesh uh, uh, was peeled from his head uh, uh, he uh, uh, wore a crown that you and I deserved uh, that one day you and I will receive a crown of righteousness uh, for his name's sake uh, Look in verse number 20. Uh, and when they had mocked him, they took off the purple from him, put his own clothes on him, uh, and led him out to crucify him. Uh, 
they mocked him and shamed him. The Lord of Lords and King of Kings was made a mockery before a band of soldiers. My dear friends, I don't know about you. There's something within my flesh. I just don't like to be mocked. Right. Right. Do you think the Lord Jesus liked to be mocked? No. Yet... He came before his shears as a sheep dumb and opened not his mouth. He could have spoke a word and they would have ceased to exist. I mean, when they came to rest him at Gethsemane, they asked if he was Jesus of Nazareth. When he said, I am the power of him, admitting who he was, they all fell on their backside. Can you imagine if he just spoke that sharp two-edged sword? But yet he didn't. So why didn't he preach you? Because he loved you. Jeez. And he loved me. Amen. Notice they spit on the Lord Jesus in verse 19. It said they smote him on the head with a reed and did spit upon him. They smote him. They whacked him across the head with a reed. And then they spit on the Lord Jesus. I wonder those that are burning in the charred region of the dam today wish they'd had that same spit to cool their tongue. Can I say they suspended the Lord Jesus. Verse number 24, and when they'd crucified him, they nailed him to a cross and they suspended him between heaven and earth. Can I say the Lord Jesus did not fight them after he carried his cross up Calvary's hill He yielded to the cross and they nailed him to the cross. They erected it and dropped it in a hole. And I'm told when that thing hit in that hole, uh, uh, those that hung on crosses, it felt like every bone would go out of joint. He's suspended. He's there, stripped, beaten, spit upon, mocked, blasphemed dying in an open shame can I say the worst part of the crucifixion happened when total darkness had come on it on the earth and he cried my God my God why hast thou forsaken me Isaiah 53 6 says and the Lord laid on him the iniquity of us all Colt and every sin you ever commit was laid on the Lord Jesus. And when he became sin for you and I, the Holy Heavenly Father could no longer have fellowship with him. He turned his back on him. And the Lord Jesus died alone in an open shame. But can I say this? They could not slay Jesus. Look, if you will, in verse 37. And Jesus cried with a loud voice and gave up the ghost. The veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. And when the centurion, which stood over against him, saw that he so cried out and gave up the ghost, uh, he said, Truly this man was the Son of God. No man had ever died like Jesus. Uh, This centurion uh, was a man uh, where his whole responsibility uh, was to inflict pain on people, uh, hang them on a cross, and watch them to die. Uh, He'd watch countless die uh, on that hill called Mount Calvary, uh, that hill called Golgotha. Uh, But can I say, he'd never seen anybody die like Jesus. The average man, it took three or four days to die on a cross. Uh, And uh, if they needed him to die sooner, Uh, they'd come and break their legs uh, so they could no longer uh, reach up and gasp for air uh, and they would drown in their own fluids. Uh, But can I say the Lord Jesus just hung there uh, for a measly six hours uh, and when he seen everything was accomplished uh, and the law was fulfilled uh, and the Father was pleased, uh, the Bible said that he uh, gave up the ghost. Uh, He willingly gave his life. Uh, They did not kill him. He gave his life for you and I Uh, hey they could not take his life Uh, he is the resurrection and the life Uh, they could not slay the Lord Jesus Uh, and with God's help for just a few minutes 
I asked Brother Phil to sing that song because I just want to preach on thanks for Calvary. Thanks for Calvary. Because of Calvary, I'm thankful for the Son of God. Well, what a blessing that one day uh, he decided he'd come uh, and pay our sin debt long before he ever created us. Uh, What a blessing. Uh, The son was willing uh, uh, to drink his bitter cup uh, and willing uh, to do the will of his heavenly father. Uh, The Bible said, you know John 3, 16, for God so loved the world uh, that he gave his only begotten son uh, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish uh, but have have everlasting life. Uh, I said thanks to Calvary and I'm thankful uh, for the Son of God. Uh, First John chapter number 4 uh, verse number 9 says, uh, In this was manifested uh, the love of God toward us. Uh, God proved His love, uh, showed His love uh, for you and I on Calvary. Uh, he said, goes on to say, Because that God sent His only begotten Son uh, into the world that we might live through Him. Uh, Here in his love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. He was the payment for our sins. God willingly sent his son. The son willingly came to make a way for sinners like you and I to be saved. 1 John 5, 20 says this, And we know that the Son of God has come and hath given us an understanding that we may know him that is true uh, and we are in him that is true uh, even in his son Jesus Christ uh, this is the true God and eternal life Uh, I'm thankful for the son of God Uh, can I say uh, uh, because of Calvary I'm thankful for his suffering he didn't have to suffer but he chose to suffer so you and I could have eternal life said in Isaiah 53 verse 5 but he was wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed all we like sheep have gone astray we've turned every one to his own way uh, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all oh I'm thankful for his suffering 2 Corinthians 5, 21, for he, for he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Oh, I'm thankful he took my sin, and I'm thankful he robed me in his righteousness the day I called upon him and trusted in him as Lord and Savior. Colossians 1 says this in verse 12, giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness, uh, and hath translated us in the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. I'm thankful he shed his blood for our sins. The Bible says without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. Uh, I'm glad that the royal, righteous, redeeming blood of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, can take the blackest sinner and wash him uh, in that precious blood and make him white as snow. What a blessing. I'm thankful for his suffering. Can I say this this morning? I'm thankful for his strength. Can I say his strength is exemplified throughout this entire process. He was hemorrhaging in the garden and about to die. When he asked for the Lord to allow that bitter cup to pass from him, he was not talking about not going to Calvary. He was talking that he wouldn't die in the garden. And the Lord sent angels to minister unto him and he had strength in Gethsemane. He had strength in Golgotha. After they beat him beyond recognition, he carried his cross some two miles down the Via Della Rosa to be crucified. What strength he showed that he carried all the sins of all mankind and still was able to fulfill the will of the Father and give his life for you and I. And then he showed his strength at the grave when he had power over death, hell, and the grave. Matthew 28 and 5 says, And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. 
Come see the place uh, where the Lord lay. Uh, I'm thankful for our darling Savior. I'm thankful that the grave couldn't hold him. Uh, I'm thankful that Satan couldn't keep him dead. Uh, I'm thankful Lord, uh, for the Lord uh, who resurrected. Uh, and as Phil said when he got up to sing, every Sunday uh, we celebrate the resurrection of the Lord. Uh, what a blessing uh, that the grave couldn't hold him. We serve a risen Savior. Uh, he gave his life uh, and he rose again under his own power for he is the resurrection and the life. Uh, the great apostle Paul said this in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 3, For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, uh, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, uh, and that he was buried, uh, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Uh, everything Jesus did, he did scripturally. Uh, he did by the Bible. Uh, and what a blessing uh, that uh, the, Paul, the apostle Paul said, I'm going to give you the same gospel that I received, uh, the death, burial, and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, the good news is you don't have to die and go to hell. Uh, Jesus died to save you. All you got to do is put your faith in him. Uh, I'm thankful for his strength. Uh, can I say this? I'm thankful for salvation today. Amen. I ought to be in hell, but I've been saved 50 years. Amen. I bless the Lord. He didn't have to save me, but I'm glad he did. I'm glad I heard the gospel at a young age. I'm glad I understood what the gospel meant. I'm glad for the day uh, when the Savior came and spoke to my heart and I realized I was lost uh, and I needed to be saved. Uh, that night I made my way to an old-fashioned altar, uh, called on the Lord, and He saved me and changed my life, and I've never been the same since. Uh, I'm thankful for salvation. Ephesians 2.8 tells us, For by grace are you saved through faith. That's it. When I came to the Lord, I had nothing to offer him, but he had all of heaven to offer me. Huh? Uh, but it goes on to say, and that not of yourselves. You can't work your way into heaven. There's no works you can do to get to heaven. You can be baptized, be a church member. Uh, uh, you can jump through hoops. You can go to whatever you want to, but that won't save you. Uh, no, you're saved by grace through faith. And that not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Uh, greatest gift you'll ever receive is the gift of salvation. Acts chapter 16, uh, that Philippian jailer, after he saw all that God did for Paul and Silas, uh, he asked them, uh, 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 Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Uh, and they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved and thy house. Uh, that old boy got saved that night. Uh, 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 his household got saved that night. Uh, and he took the, uh, Paul and Silas and cleaned them up. Uh, what a blessing uh, uh, when God changes a heart. Huh? Of course, Romans 10, 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you're here today and you're not saved, you're in the right place. You can get saved today. The Lord Jesus died for you, loved you, and will save you today. I'm thankful for salvation. You know, Thanksgiving's coming up. You know, Thanksgiving is a, is a thing that ought to be on a Christian's lips every day. Every day he loadeth us with benefits. Every day he's good to us. Every day he blesses us. And we ought to be thankful for some things. Can I say I'm thankful for the scriptures? Had it been for the scriptures, I'd never heard of Jesus. I'm thankful that people still preach the scriptures. Uh, can I say this? It does not contain the word of God. It is the word of God. We don't need a new version or we don't need it to change. Uh, we need it to change us. Uh, I thank God for the scriptures. What a blessing to have the Bible. Do you know most of the world don't have a copy of the Bible? What a blessing to have God's word. And we can read and we can study and we can meditate on it. It changes us. It transforms us. Oh, what a blessing to have the scriptures. I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for the sanctuary. I'm glad God's given a place where we can come and worship. Mm, I told you all of a church on Wednesday that was voting. I haven't heard, but they was voting whether or not to keep the doors open. Sad. Boy, we ought to be thankful for the sanctuary. We ought to be thankful how good God's been to us and how God's blessed us. huh? A lot of churches, all you got is a bunch of older folks. Thank God for older folks. But boy, isn't it a blessing to have these younger folks in church? Uh, isn't it good to have 20-year-olds in the church and 30-year-olds and 40-year-olds and 50-year-olds and then you get up to my age? Huh? What a blessing. 
Huh? God's been good to our church. Yes. Look at the preachers he's given us. Look at the talent he's given us. The folks that sing. Listen, listen to the youth choir sing. I mean, God's been good to us. Yes. Y'all be thankful for your church. And your church family. Hmm? Thankful for the saints of God. Think of, the, think of the people of God that God put in your life that's helped change your life. Sure. I'm thankful for the saints of God. Hmm. I'm thankful for all my preacher friends. I'm thankful for people that invested in my life, and I'm thankful for you that come and hear the word of God, and you that labor in the church, and you that, that love Jesus and aren't ashamed to let folks know. Yes. That blesses me. Yes. I'm honored to be your pastor. I thank God for the saints. And then I'll say this lastly. I'm thankful for his soon coming. Amen. He's coming again. Yes. He promised he'd come again. Yes, sir. Then he told us what it would be like on the earth right before he came again. Right. Said, what would it be like? Look around. Right. Right. Amen. Everything's in order. Yeah. I believe he's coming soon. Amen. Uh, I really do. I bless the Lord. He's coming soon. We ought to work until the night time to come. You know, the night time's coming. We ought to work yes, and serve the Lord. But I think he's coming. I think he's coming soon. And we, what a blessing when Paul wrote this to the church of Thessalonica in chapter 4. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, those that died in Christ, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. He's talking about the scribes. Uh, did believe in the resurrection of the dead. But he goes on to say this. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Uh, it goes on to say, For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, uh, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Uh, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds uh, to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord wherefore comfort one another with these words if you're not comforted by the fact that he's coming soon I've got news for you you need to get right with the Lord but if you're right with the Lord it should excite you that he's coming soon what he did, what the Apostle Paul did was explain what's going to happen at the translation of the saints, uh, at the catching away of the saints, uh, or as we refer to it as the rapture of the church. Uh, what is going to happen, preacher? Uh, those that have died in Christ, uh, he's going to bring his soul with them, uh, and uh, they're going to rise first. Uh, 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 the trump of God's going to sound, uh, the voice of the archangel is going to sound, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Uh, he's going to take their old bodies, uh, wherever they've been buried, wherever they've been laid to rest uh, and they're going to burst out of the grave uh, and that soul and that body is going to be reunited and changed into a glorified body like unto, unto the Lord. Uh, you say, how's that going to happen? It's going to happen in a moment and twinkle my quicker than you can blink it's going to happen. Right. And then we which are alive and remain we're going to be caught up and we're going to meet them in the air and we're going to meet the Lord. Yeah. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. What a blessing, huh? And then uh, uh, there'll be seven years tribulation on the earth, then we're going to come back with him when he literally comes back to this earth. Uh, we're going to come back riding on white horses uh, when he comes to defend Israel, and then he'll sit on the throne of David for a thousand years and we'll rule and reign with him. Huh? Right. He's a coming, hey. and he's coming soon. Yes. Because of what he done on Calvary, because I believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and he saved me and changed me, guess what? I'm going because he's a coming. Amen. I'm thankful for that. Now I've said all that to say this. Do you know the Lord? If you don't, he wants to save you. He died that horrible death to save you. He allowed you to be here today to hear this message because he wants to save you. And if you don't know the Lord, today would be a great day to be saved. You say, Preacher, I don't know how to be saved. In a moment, we're going to have an invitation. We're just going to invite you to come. And if you come, I'll get somebody to take a Bible and show you from the Bible how you can be saved. It's very simple to be saved. All you've got to do is realize you need to be saved. Realize you're lost. And come and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. He'll save you. 
He'll change your life. Oh, if you want to be saved, you can be saved today. If you are saved, are you ready to go? You ought to be ready to go. And if you are saved, when's the last time you thanked him for Calvary? When's the last time you thanked him for suffering the way he suffered for you? Hmm? You know what you were before you got saved. You ought to be thankful that he saved you. Some of you got saved at a young age. You ought to be thankful that he saved you from all that mess. Yes, sir. When's the last time you thanked him? This will be Thanksgiving week. We ought to start the week off real good by thanking the Lord for all that he's done in our life. You ought to thank him for your family. You ought to thank him for your blessings. You ought to thank him if you got a job. You ought to thank him if uh, 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 he's been good to your family. You ought to, you got a lot to thank him for. Yes, sir. I really believe if we get real good and thankful, he might get real good and just bless more and more. Huh? Well, he's out there. Arizona. My son and daughter-in-law abused my granddaughter. Come here, baby. Look at this bruise. Where'd you get hurt? Yeah, in your head. Was it mommy's fault or daddy's fault? Yeah, both of them. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so they FaceTime us. We're going to urgent care. I'm in Flagstaff, Arizona. And my darling grandbaby's got to go to urgent care because mom and daddy abused her. <laughs> Gave her a ball pit. And she hit a windowsill. Bad. It was bad. You want to go up there? All right. Every day she FaceTimed me. Every day she wanted to talk to Mimi and Rev. Now that don't do anything for you. But it sure did make me thankful. Amen. I got something so precious. And that her head was okay. And that she means so much to us, we changed her flight and came early to see her. And you spent the night with Big Rev and Mimi Friday night, didn't you? Yeah. What did we watch? Remember? Did we watch The Grinch? Yeah. Hey, Toho loves The Grinch. She's a true foster. <laughs> so what are you saying, preacher? I'm saying we got a lot to be thankful for. If it wasn't for Calvary, I might have ended up a drunk dope addict may have never got to meet Miss Annette so I met her in church if I never got saved I wouldn't have met her wouldn't have the family I have today who knows what my life would have been like might already be in hell but we got a lot to thank God for God's been good to you so well preacher I don't have this going on and that going on I could be blessed more you're blessed trust me Please well, just out in the Navajo Indian at Reservation. Trust me, everybody Amen. in here is blessed. Amen. I've seen destitution and poorness. It's terrible. God's been good to us. Amen. We got a lot to thank God for. I wonder this morning, are you willing to come? If you're not saved, once you come, oh, we'll get somebody to take a Bible, show you how to be. Don't leave this, this sanctuary lost today. Come and trust Jesus. He loves you so much. Child of God, he loves you so much. Maybe you just strayed a little. Miss Brittany sang that song, and he's been just tracking you. Why don't you come back to him today and get things made right? Oh, if you're here and you're living for God, why don't you let God know you're thankful for all the blessings he's given you. Let's all stand. Brother Clint, come get a song of invitation. Thank you, baby. Folks are already coming. While they're coming, let's have a word of prayer. Father, we sure do bless you. You've been so good to us. Lord, there are not enough words or enough appreciation we could ever show for what you've done on Calvary for us. Lord, we gladly serve you, not because we have to, but because we love you. And we love you because you first loved us and you demonstrated that on the cross. Lord, thank you for giving us good church. Thank you for the scriptures. Lord, I'm so thankful for all those things. I'm thankful for my family. I'm thankful for the blessings of God. Lord, I'm grieved in my heart because there may be somebody here today unsaved, not ready to meet you. 
Lord, I pray you'd speak to their heart. I pray they'd come and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray for that one that may be drifting. God, I pray you'd renew them this morning and restore them. God, I just pray you'd do work. Bless these that are in the altar. God, have your will and way. Speak to hearts and we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.